Coming up on iPads in the Classroom. The future of the book. I'm Ashley Roki. And I'm Guy Trainin. And this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today we're talking about the future of the book. Now, um, I talk to a lot of people about uh, books and being able to have books on the iPad. And a lot of people are uncomfortable with it. I am comfortable with it. But I still think that there will be always room for books in paper and books in digital form. It's not that one thing is totally replacing the other, but on the other hand, and this is something that has been mentioned a few times, if we do want everybody to have a nice collection of books, let's say, I don't know, 50 books at home, 100 books at home, and we have 7 billion people on Earth, that's a lot of books. And if all of them had to be paper, that is not really viable. So uh, digital books can serve as a way to make sure that we have access to everybody. And uh, libraries is another solution, obviously, and a lot of libraries are getting into digital forms as well, and we talked about this in the past. But today I really want to talk about books that look different, that really use those digital components to do things that are different and that go beyond what would be just take a paper book and put it, you know, scan it and put it on a device. And so the first one I want to show is something called True Legends. And uh, True Legends is actually an Israeli uh, story. And it's all about moving everything with the zooming. And it's just for me a concept of what a book can be and how a book like this can be very, very different than a book on a paper. But a, we need bigger collection of these, obviously. But it's interesting efforts to do a product that looks differently. And so you can see that we zoom in and we zoom in on the face and then we get the story here. And this is a story about the t a piano tuner and we follow him through the tuning fork and what he does. And you keep following him and follow the story and follow into it. Is it easy to like skip a page on accident? If you go too fast, you will skip a page. But uh, the navigation has enough steps in between that that's not very likely to happen. I, I played with it quite a bit and I've never had a problem. So the whole idea is that you're just discovering the book as you go. So it's the, it gives you, in this case, that notion of the story that is nested within itself. And you keep on... Very on nice for students, especially those who are unmotivated. Yeah. And and you get a totally different sense about the book. I think that that physical movement really, really helps. And, and it has been commented that it a little bit reminds us of uh, Prezi as a presentation software with that whole zooming in and moving around and all of that, which is uh, very interesting. And so True Legends is the first book that I wanted to talk about. And what's interesting about this is the emphasis in this book is really about the visual. There's very little sound and no movement besides the moving around. This is an example of a book that, uh, that goes in a totally different direction. This is from DreamWorks, and this is uh, all about how to train your dragon, which my kids enjoy very, very much. And uh, here, what you can see is you have a story, And you create a character. This is my son's character, his choice. And therefore, and you can see that you have multiple students with mul or multiple kids with multiple profiles and being at a different point in the story. And this is an exploration story. So you, you get a story and it's primarily a book, not a game, mm. but it has game-like features. So this is an integration of the ideas of games and books. And so if you go to a specific area, you get transported there. And uh, the app will read or you can keep it quiet. And what you can see is that it tracks while it reads. So you do get uh, the ability to follow along, even if you're listening. And then it guides you through what to do. So uh, you switch pages by swiping from uh, right to left which is kind of like um, pages of a book, but not quite. So it's not doing what iBooks, for example, does, which is pretend that it's real paper. 
And this is something that we've seen also in lots of apps and in the research we've been doing is different apps have different ways to uh, transfer between pages and that's actually a strength because it teaches kids to be creative, to be attentive to the details and just to play around and see what works. If you try it the other way and it doesn't work, you, you try it to the, uh, the way that it will until you find out what works and then you can see that uh, this is all going on. And the other feature here is, of course, that they put you into the, uh, you as the reader into the story, which is, again, something that you can do in these kind of stories because you have uh, the uh, capacity to include things that are digital. So you can see there's animation, there's a story, there's a sense of movement without overtaking and without making it a game, which is something I like. I don't want this to be a game. I want this to be a book. I want there to be reading and comprehension and all of that. But this allows interaction and a different sense of ownership of the story. And uh, this is fascinating. So you can navigate the story page by page or you can, if you'd like, use the map to move between areas. So as you discover more and go deeper into the story, you can go back uh, and forth. And this is the kind of animation that I like. It's still book-like, it's still uh, creative, and it's still a focus on the text and the story, but it's a different visual that you could have with a book. And so you can see that this is a way to, uh, to create books that really utilize what the digital format can offer us uh, and still uh, be books. So another um, book app that I have is called Epic, and I've actually never used this before, so we're going to walk through it and see what it has to offer. Absolutely. OK, so it brings you, looks like, to just a welcome screen. It tells you it has thousands of books waiting for you. Um, it looks like you can sign in or Click on educators, we'll see what that does. Oh, you can create an educator account. But if you just want to click next, mm -hmm. it'll ask for how old is the primary reader. So let's do seven. Oh, and it has different categories, which is nice. Let's choose um, living things. OK. Mm -hmm. Well, it gets even more specific, so... Let's okay. choose insects and farm animals. Okay. We have to create an account. Okay. okay. We'll create a quick account. So now we're getting started. Now we're Yay. getting started. So let's get started. Creating your personal library. So if you make more choices, you're going to have a richer library. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that kids, I would argue, are not narrowing things too much because we want right. them to experience new ideas and new genre. At the same time, we want to capitalize on their interest. So this is a way to do a little bit of both. OK, so you can add student profiles, it looks like, which is nice. So mm -hmm. let's add a student. Yeah. OK. All done. So you right. can either, yeah, all done or create another one. So you could add multiple students. Mm -hmm. um, and here it comes up with books recommended for you based on your selections. OK, so let's, I like this one. The Cow in Patrick O'Shanahan's Kitchen. And you can listen to the story read, or you can read it without uh, listening. The question is, can we make it bigger? That's what I want. So you get, you can see that they've got uh, game-like features. They're giving you uh, little rewards or little uh, badges for making progress. So in this case, you get a badge for just starting out, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. I haven't done anything and I'm already a winner. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and now you can uh, read. I wonder, you can zoom in on the picture or the text, which I like. And if you go out, you can see what page you are, and you can jump pages all the way to this page. And then you can rate the specific story, so other kids and, and or adults mm -hmm. that are interested would have a rating for this uh, story. I love the fact that we can do this, mm -hmm. because if you've got, mm -hmm. and I've got the Zoom reward, I'm just 
rocking it right <laughs> now. But uh, the idea is that you can make the text bigger, so if this is hard for you to read, and this may be my old eyes more than anything else, but if you're having a problem tracking or uh, focusing on that part of the page, this is an important piece. I love the drawings. Mm -hmm. And Epic is free. It right? is free. And so it's a wonderful collection of books, all available for free. So when we talk about how do we get a lot of books in the hands of kids and adults, here's a way. Mm -hmm. You take a one like Epic, and there are others like it that have a rich array of books that are available. If you pay, you get even more books. But even without paying anything, you get fantastic books that are well written. You see that they are well drawn, and some of them have actual uh, mm -hmm. photos, like this one about cows. Cows is what it's all about today. Mm -hmm. And we are in Nebraska, so that is highly appropriate. And so you can have both narrative and expository text uh, incorporate into this, which is again great because there is an emphasis on informational text. And here are some at different grade levels. In this case, since I'm seven, it's right <laughs> spot on. Okay, so today on iPads in the Classroom, we looked at some apps that show us some directions that the future of the book can go, especially when we're using digital devices. And we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.